The demand for money. This demand for money is based on Keynes' liquidity preference theory for money. And what we do here is we divide it up into what we call active balances and passive balances. Now, active balances are those balances we need to do transactions. That is to pay our bills, to go to the supermarket, buy your goods and services. And what we see is the amount of transactions that's being done in the economy is determined by the level of output and income. And the higher the level of output and income, the more transactions there are and the higher will be the demand for money. So an increase in income leads to an increase in the demand for transaction balances or active balances. If we do that on the diagram, where we have our demand for money function, interest rate, demand for money, we can say for a given level of output, let's assume output 1, this will be our demand for money. If there's an increase in this output to output 2, it's represented by a rightward shift of the demand for money to output 2. What happens here is that at every interest rate, we now have a higher demand for money because income is higher and there's a higher need for transactions. Now, passive demand for money is that money where you decide how to keep your wealth. And in this model, you can do two things. Two things only. You can keep it as a treasury bill, or TB, or you keep it as money, or a combination of the two. So if your wealth is 100, and you say, I'm going to keep 80 as money, it also implies you've decided to keep 20 as treasury bills. So you can see the decision to keep money reflects also your decision to have bonds or not. And people will then switch from money to treasury bills and treasury bills to money. Now, why keep wealth in treasury bills? The reason is it pays a rate of return, which in this model is referred to as the interest rate. In the interest rate. Now, if you keep your wealth in money or this what you have in money, earns no rate of return. So what we're saying is the interest rate that you can earn on your treasury bills is the opportunity cost for holding or not holding money. So if you keep money, then your opportunity cost is the rate of return that you give up if you're not holding your treasury bills. So, in a certain other sense is, the interest rate we pay is to convince you not to keep money. So, if you look at your relationship here, we can say that if the interest rate increases, then the opportunity cost of money increases, which means the quantity of money that people will wish to hold will decrease. So, if we put that on the diagram, there's our money demand interest rate and as the interest rate changes, in this case the interest rate decreases, you can see the quantity of money demanded increases. In other words, then you move on the curve. So movement on your money demand curve occurs when the interest rate changes. Whereas if income increases, then it shifts the money demand curve.